Hi, I'm Gabriela Martinez, Director of Education at MOLA, the Museum of Latin American Art in Long Beach, California. On behalf of the entire staff at MOLA, I'd like to welcome you to the 2020 Latino Comics Expo Worldwide. Today's program and the entire event would not be possible without the generous support of our sponsors. Here's a brief welcome from our presenting sponsor, Hyundai. On behalf of Hyundai Motor America, we welcome you to the 2020 Latino Comic Expo. As part of our Hispanic Heritage Celebration, we are thrilled to sponsor this great event. We hope that you enjoy the amazing Latino talent that will be featured. Additional support was provided by the San Manuel Band of Mission Indians, the Josephina Gumbiner Foundation, the Robert Gumbiner Foundation, City of Long Beach, and the Arts Council of Long Beach. This afternoon's featured artist is Rodi Montijo. Storyteller Rodi Montijo is the author of the comic book series, Pablo's Inferno, as well as the children's books, Cloud Boy and the Halloween Kid. He has a BFA in illustration from California College of Arts and Crafts, which he attended on a scholarship. Montijo is one of the creators of the animated internet series, Happy Tree Friends, and his most recent series is The Amazing Gum Girl, about gum-obsessed Gabby Gomez, who accidentally becomes a sticky superhero. Thanks again for joining us today, and remember to drop any questions into the Q&A window at the bottom of your screen. Rodi is happy to answer any questions related to his books or his journey as an illustrator. Take it away, Rodi. Thank you, Gabby. And just letting our audiences know that Rodi will be doing a book reading. He'll be giving you a little bit of behind the scenes as to what goes into illustration and you'll be able to see some of his amazing drawings. And then he'll be answering questions at the end. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Latino Comics Expo Worldwide 2020. Thank you, Mola and Hyundai for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to share a little bit of the amazing gum girl. I will read to you a few, it was supposed to be one chapter, but I'm gonna go a little bit beyond and share with you um, a little bit of the story. And then I will um, stop and take some questions from you. And then I will share some more behind the scenes into what it took to get the Amazing Gum Girl made. So thank you for joining. Um, and can you guys, I think it's everything's working here. Okay, so um, one second here. All right, so I will be reading from the Amazing Gum Girl here. And I will be sharing the screen now. Gabby Gomez should have seen it coming. She had been blowing on that bubble for as long as anyone could remember and it was bound to blow up in her face sooner or later. But how could Gabby have imagined that something as sweet and as simple as one tiny piece of bubblegum could lead to such a terrible trouble, to, can lead to such terrible trouble? Even with her parents and teachers always warning her that no good would come from so much gum chewing and bubble blowing, it would have been hard to believe. But then again, Gabby was far from your normal, average, everyday gum chewer. She, she chewed gum, she chewed bubble gum everywhere. She chewed it here. Oops, let's see here. She chewed it here. And she even chewed it here. She chewed gum all day, every day. And all night, every night. And then one morning, Mommy, Gabby woke up to a rather sticky situation. She had gone to bed chomping on a huge wad of gum and now it was stuck to her hair. I know, Gabby groaned as she waited for her mother to come to her rescue. I'm never gonna hear the end of this. There, there, mi corazón, cooed Mrs. Gomez. This will take care of that sticky mess. After witnessing her daughter's predicament, Gabby's mom had rushed out and returned with, of all things, peanut butter. Ew, peanut butter, asked Gabby. Gabby Gomez did not like peanut butter. Yes, peanut butter, answered her mom. Or I get a piece, of, I get a pair of scissors and cut it out. No, 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 that no good Natalie Gooch would never let me live it down. I'd be the joke of the school. 
Gabby squirmed as her mom smeared the nutty goop into her hair. Hold still, soothed Mrs. Gomez. Your nana used to swear by peanut butter for getting gum out, see? Gabby's grandma really knew her stuff about gum or about peanut butter. But just like that, Gabby was gone. The gum, the gum was gone from Gabby's hair. Wow, she exclaimed, it really worked. No lecture either, Gabby thought. She congratulated herself on her narrow escape and rushed to get ready for school. Now let me wash off this yucky peanut butter smell. Gabby was peanut butter free and dressed in no time flat. Gracias, mami, she called as she started out the door. Adios, you too, Rico. Uh, but Mrs. Gomez had something to say. Not so fast, young lady. Gabby's heart sank. I know, here it comes, she thought. Another lecture about chewing gum. Well, at least it's not from Papi. Nothing's worse than getting a gum lecture from a dentist. She had to act fast. But mommy, but mommy, Gabby smiled her sweetest and most innocent smile. I'm going to be late. And you know how Miss Smoot hates tardiness. Maybe this can wait until after school. And by then, hopefully you will have forgotten this, forgive, forgotten this whole thing, she added to herself. Oh, this won't take long, replied Mrs. Gomez. You'll have more than enough time to get to school. Gabby's heart sank lower. Your father and I have warned you to go easy with gum chewing, haven't we? Yes, mommy. Like the time at the art gallery, what a mess. Yes, mommy. And don't forget about your Tia Carmen's parrot. Poor crackers, he never said another word. Your, your aunt never got over it. I know, mommy. So I'm sorry to have to do this, but no more gum. No more gum. This is terrible. This is horrible. Gabby dragged herself along the sidewalk to school. After so many close calls, her mother had finally laid down the law. Now Gabby had no idea what she would do. The longest she had ever gone without bubble gum was the time that mean old Natalie Gooch had snatched her gum at the start of school. Gabby had been forced to go the whole day without a single chew and that had felt like forever. This is the worst day of my life, Gabby grumbled. She couldn't imagine it getting any worse, not even if mean old Natalie Gooch sat on her. Then Gabby remembered something. She reached down into her pocket and pulled out a piece of gum. It was her very last piece of limited edition, mighty mega ultra stretchy, super duper extend bubble bubble gum. The shiny sweet shone in her hand like a rare gem. It was so pretty and pink. It felt so smooth and smelled so totally scrumptious that Gabby could almost taste it. Oh, it looks so good. Gabby licked her lips and just imagine the bubble I could blow with this. Gabby stopped herself. How can I even be thinking what I'm thinking? Mommy would have a heart attack if she knew. But looking around, Gabby saw there wasn't anyone to see her. Besides, she told herself, it's just one teeny tiny little piece. What could it hurt? And then Gabby did the unthinkable. Oh, yum. The flavors of the special limited edition Mighty Mega Ultra Stretchy Super Duper Extend a Bubble Bubble Gum exploded on Gabby's taste buds. It's so num, 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 scrumptious. With every chew, Gabby's fears faded. It's so yummy. Num, num, num. And so num, 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 gummy. All the awful things that had happened that morning, the gum in her hair, the peanut butter, even the lecture from her mother began to feel like a bad dream. Soon, any thought of getting busted had vanished. She wished the feeling could last forever. I bet, num, 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 I could blow, num, 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 the biggest num, 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 bubble num, 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 ever. Gabby took a long breath and started to blow and blow until suddenly, bzzz. I know, Gabby thought, what have I done? Gabby stared at her hands in disbelief. They were a mess. But it didn't stop there. Gabby followed the sticky, chewy, gummy, gooey layer of pinkness all the way up her arms to her dress, then down to the front of her legs and shoes. She was covered all over. She started to reach up to check her face and hair, but she knew she didn't need to. As anyone who has gone through a catastrophic bubblegum bubble collapse knows, the face gets it first. Gabby stood there completely buried beneath a coat of limited edition, mighty mega, ultra stretchy, super duper extended bubble bubblegum. 
This was a bad situation. Gabby was gummy. I can't go to school like this, she thought. Miss Moot doesn't even allow gum in class, but I can't go home either. One look at me and mommy would explode. She told me no more gum and now I'm covered in it. Dun, dun, dun. Gabby wandered aimlessly trying to figure out how such a small piece of gum could have created such a big mess. Look at me, this is crazy, loco, she said in disbelief. Mommy said that all my gum chewing would lead into trouble, but, I, but did I stop? No, I couldn't stop chewing gum and now I'm covered. It didn't make any sense. What was in that limited edition Mighty Mega Ultra Stretchy Super Duper Extend a Bubble Bubble Gum anyway, she asked herself, but no answer could explain the amount of gum covering her or why it was impossible to get off. Anything Gabby touched stuck to her like she was made out of glue. Oh man, she moped, this stinks. It didn't take long for Gabby to realize the stuff covering her was not your standard ordinary candy store variety bubble gum. Far from it. This stuff was a whole lot stickier and there was more of it than seemed possible. In fact, if Gabby hadn't known any better, she would have sworn that she was made out of gum. How did this happen, Gabby wondered. Why me? She felt low. She felt lower than low. Gabby was as low as a wad of chewed up gum scraped from the bottom of a shoe until trouble entered the picture. Yoink. Help, stop, thief. Whoa. Ew. Here's your purse, miss. My purse? You're my hero. Thank you so much, you gooey, uh, sticky, uh, sweet gum girl. Gum girl? Gum girl? Gum girl! Suddenly, Gabby didn't feel quite so low. How could she? Whatever had happened to her had given her some strange and wonderful new superpowers, and she had accidentally used those powers to help a stranger in need. She was like some kind of comic book hero swooping in to save the day. Gabby grew so giddy imagining what else she might be able to do that she started to hum and then to sing. If you start trouble, do, 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 I'll burst your bubble, do, 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 cause I'm a gone girl, do, do, do. Yes, I'm a gone girl, do, do, do. She strolled along feeling quite pleased with herself until she remembered there was some place she was supposed to be. Oh wait, I need to get to school. How do I turn to myself back again? Gabby was stuck. If only there were some magic potion that could make Gum Girl disappear and bring back my old self. Wait, wait a minute. Magic potion, gum, disappear. Gabby jumped to her feet. Of course, that has to be it. Could the answer to her sticky bubblegum problem be that obvious? Gabby wasn't, wasn't certain, but she wasn't gonna stand around waiting to find out. Having special powers was neat, but when it came down to it, did she really want to spend the rest of her life sticking to everything? Gabby set off like a bolt of lightning. This has to work, she told herself. Please, please, please let this work. If it does, I promise I'll never ever sneak another piece of bubble gum as long as I live. Gabby didn't even stop to wonder if she'd be able to keep that promise when she made it. She just ran straight home. Gabby was almost to the front door when, she, when, when a thought stopped her dead in her tracks. What if her mom still hadn't left? to drop off Rico at, pre at preschool, or I'd come back. Mommy would freak. I can't risk her seeing me like this, Gabby thought. I'd never be able to explain, but a quick peek through the window, through the kitchen window, put her fears at rest. Nobody was home. She dashed inside, grabbed a jar of peanut butter, and ran into her room. It was time to test her theory. Gross, please work again. Minutes later, yes. Hurry, faster, faster. But finally, Miss Gomez, so nice of you to join us. Miss Moot, Miss Moot stood in front of the classroom with her arms crossed and a look that was anything but nice. Care to explain why you're late? Gabby felt like her mouth had been stuffed with the stickiest bubble gum ever. She struggled for an answer. Uh, I woke up with gum in my hair, she finally muttered. Unacceptable, Gabriella. I'm surprised at you. you. You know I don't stand for tardiness. If this happens again, you'll have detention. Now please take a seat. 
Ha ha, look who got schooled, taunted Natalie Gooch. Oh, great, thought Gabby as she sank into her chair. Minutes ago, I had superpowers, but now I'm being picked on by the biggest bully on the planet. I'm powerless and I'm powerless to do anything about it. Um, Gabby, Gabby goes home after school. Hola, mommy. Gabby rushed in after what had been her absolute worst day of school ever. Not only had she been chewed out by Miss Smoot, but Natalie Gooch had spent the rest of the day teasing her for getting busted. Uh, adios, mommy. She headed straight to her room. On top of everything else, she just couldn't face her mother. I'm making cookies for the bake sale at Rico's school, Mrs. Gomez called after her. I think I'll make my famous peanut butter cookies but Gabby had flown by so quickly that she didn't hear what her mother had said. Sounds great, Gabby called back and closed the bedroom door behind her. She felt terrible. Why had she gone and broken mom's no gum rule? Then again, helping that lady get her purse back had made her feel there was nothing she couldn't do. Gabby had felt super. How great would it be to feel like that the next time? Mean old Natalie Gooch picked on her, but how? Gabby stared hard at her hand, concentrating on turning into gum girl again, but nothing happened. And she wondered if there's some sort of magic word that might do it. Abracadabra, she commanded, still nothing. Juicy, gooey, soft and chewy, Gabby chanted. Nope. She glanced over at her pillow. She always kept an emergency piece of gum hidden under it, just in case she needed some late night gum chewing. What if Gabby, Gabby pulled the gum from its hiding place. Did she dare? What about her promise? What if her mom walked in? Gabby crossed her fingers and popped the gum into her mouth. She started chewing. Nada. This was her last chance. Gabby took a deep breath, blew a bubble, and waited. Nothing, nada, nothing. Feeling disgusted and defeated, Gabby let the bubble pop. pop. Now, where did I put that jar of peanut butter? Gabby? Gabby's mom heard the pop. I know. Gabby Gomez, that better not be gum. Peanut butter, peanut butter, it's got to be here somewhere. Young lady, I thought I told you. Where is it? Where is it? Gabby's looking for the peanut butter. You better not be chewing gum. And I will stop it there. Okay. So that's just a sneak peek of book number one. There are a total of four books in the series and I'm working on the fifth one right now. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Yeah, I have a couple of questions from the audience. Yes. And I just want to say, first of all, as a Gabby myself, <laughs> I'm really glad you went with a gum chewing Gabby instead of like a Gabby talkative Gabby, because that was a joke oh. I always got growing up. So. Oh. <laughs> I love the gum angle. Um, so we have a couple of questions, actually, some from a couple of kids in the audience. Oh, great. So there is a six year old online who wants to know if there will be a gum girl TV show. Ooh, good question. You know, I hope so. One day that would be a big dream come true. <laughs> and then we have Hazel, who is age seven, and she would like to know, when did you decide to write about Gum Girl? And is Gum Girl based on anyone that you know? Ooh, good question. Um, thank you, Hazel. Um, I, I have a little bit of a presentation of the behind the scenes, and I will share that with you, but I'll give you a quick answer. Um, it kind of started with my first children's book called Cloud Boy. You see here, let's see here, Cloud Boy. And um, uh, my editor at the time wondered what if there would be a companion book to um, Cloud Boy that would be pink. And he, he, he didn't necessarily say what I should do, but it planted the seed of Gum Girl. And I'll get into a little more of that in a little bit here. And we do have a couple of art related questions that maybe you'll get into your presentation, but I'll go ahead and pose them anyway. Yes, so John wants to know if the illustrations were drawn with traditional media or digitally. 
Um, yes, thank you for that, John. Um, they're drawn traditionally, just uh, pen and ink and um, scanned and colored digitally. Um, I'm not quite there with my digital drawing skills, um, but I enjoy using traditional ink on paper. And originally I started on nice paper and because of deadlines and how fast uh, sometimes I need to turn this in, it's just on regular copy paper, believe it or not. I have a couple more questions. Yes. So how do you choose the scenes from the story that you're going to draw? And this is something I've actually wondered myself. So what comes first, the storyline or the visuals? Great question, thank you. Um, okay, so one of the things, and I'll get into this with the, with the Secret Origins uh, presentation, is that originally um, Gum Girl, I envisioned as a comic book. Um, so with comic books, you do tell a lot of the story visually with sequential art uh, medium, which I love. And it's, it, it's something that, um, that I'm very drawn to. Um, but at the time um, when, oh, well, first I should back up. I tried to pitch the idea of Gum Girl to book publishers for many years and a lot of places um, you know, said, no, thank you. Do you have anything like Harry Potter or SpongeBob? <laughs> and so many places, it was so funny. That was the, the big thing at the time and that's what they wanted. But I didn't give up because I knew, um, you know, the demographics in, in kids books weren't matching the demographics in the world. So I, I, I kept going and finally uh, uh, Disney Hyperion uh, was interested and they wanted to do a chapter book series and not just a regular chapter book series, it was an emergent reader chapter book series to help kids graduate from picture books to chapter books. So these books would be heavily illustrated, again, something I love. So what I tried to do with these was try to tell the story um, visually. So even if you didn't read the book, you kind of get the gist of what's happening visually. Um, so. For me, I mean, there's different ways of going about it, but for me, my mind works with um, writing and, and, and art at the same time. So it's very organic. And I'll show some of this in the process coming up. Um, but usually the idea for the book comes up, like just the general um, outline and uh, um, theme for the book. And then um, it gets broken down into um, an outline and um, and then it becomes a script. Now, the first book I, I, um, I, I wrote myself, I had a lot of help with my editor because I, had, I came from picture books. So this was a lot more writing than I was used to. And since then, I, I have a great uh, co-writer with me that helps me out, Luke Reynolds. Uh, um, he helps me flesh out the ideas and get it in a script form. And I start doodling the sketches and then um, yeah it also it all organically starts coming together and then it gets edited and then I go to final inks maybe that was a long answer for your question but no, that's great and um, we have a librarian on here Rico that says that they really appreciate the answer because your books are so accessible to emergent readers and oh thank you that you know to me that's the biggest the biggest thing um, for me that I get so many messages that say my kid didn't like to read until this series and I just my my heart you know just expands hearing this because uh you know this is kind of book that I wish I had as a kid and it wasn't necessarily out there same thing with superheroes at the time there weren't many um you know Latinx yeah. um superheroes so um it's it's a you know big dream come true to be able to do this and hopefully it it it, it speaks to someone else, the readers out there, and that just brings me the biggest joy. And that was an unplanned thing to hear that kids enjoy reading because of these books. I mean, it's amazing. I'm really glad that you brought up issues of representation. I know like working at MOLA, which also highlights Latin American and Latinx artists, a lot of visitors say just how meaningful it is to be able to learn about artists and subjects that you know really relate to their own experiences. And that leads me to another question actually, given the fact that there's so few opportunities for a lot of underrepresented artists um, in the field, uh, 
One emerging artist has asked that they're thinking about making a book. Would you recommend self-publishing and maybe kind of go into the pros and cons of being published versus self-publishing? Sure, great question, thank you. And it's a, it's a good um, reminder for my, like when I first started, I started um, self-publishing my comic book, Pablo's Inferno, and it was just down and dirty, stapled at, you know, at a copy store. And it was just a way for me to figure out what's my process. It wasn't all figured out, it wasn't all polished, but it was a way to figure out storytelling and um, seeing if it works and how to you know, save things for when you turn a page and get a reveal, things like this with the craft of storytelling. I think it helped a bunch to do it self-published. Uh, for me at first, that's, that's what helped kind of um, you know, just work on my craft um, because it, 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 you know, it doesn't come out smooth <laughs> when you're starting, um, but that's part of it. You have to go through that to get to, um, you know, the, the finish line in a, in a polished way later, if that's what you're going for. And so, yeah, I, I, I personally highly recommend the self-publishing route. Um, if you want to not wait for someone to say, yes, we'll publish this, just do it yourself. There's so many avenues now with putting it online and getting uh, more, uh, you know, responsive feedback than say when I, when I was doing it. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's rewarding in its own way. And thankfully I, I later got a grant, um, it wasn't planned, but I later got a grant to um, release Pablo's Inferno to a mass audience and and so both have their pros and cons, you know, with self-publishing, you can only reach so many people, but you do reach people and you do it how you want to and envision this wholly on your own. With um, publishing, um, you have editors that you work with, there are changes, there are suggestions. Uh, for me, I've been lucky that a lot of the suggestions um, help make the story stronger and so that's that's very helpful. And you know they'll catch certain things. Oh, you know she's wearing this on this page, and then she switches to this. Things that because I'm so in it, I don't catch those little things sometimes. So it does help, and you reach a wider audience. Um, so there are pros and cons to both. Um, but I I love that I did the self publishing route uh, to begin with, um, <laughs> and that I figured things out along the way. It's it's like a work in progress. So you mentioned that you were able to receive a grant. I know funding is a huge issue for a lot of us. Um, did you find that grant really easy or how, how were you, I guess, connected to that resource? G great question. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I, I wish I had more information on this and I, and I think it's a little bit maybe um, with online resources, it might be easier to, to search for things, but at the time, my friend and um, um, uh, publisher, original publisher, Dan uh, Chapman, he told me, hey, there's this grant by one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles guys, and this is their way of giving back because they started as self-publishing. A lot of people don't know that they, you know, had black and white comics that they did themselves. Um, and uh, they made it big, you know, so this was their way of giving back. And I think they would award, this grant unfortunately no longer exists, but back then they would award, I think up to six people every half year, um, up to $5,000 to help um, with the publishing costs and distribution. And so that was very helpful for me back then. But yeah, like I said, unfortunately that grant no longer exists, but I'm sure there are other um, things out there like that. And, and that's the thing is, I think if you can't find something, you could put it online um, at no cost and it reaches a big audience bigger than you might think. And we have a couple of comments. This one is from YouTube. We have Rosalie who is six years old and wanted to say that Gum Girl is one of their favorite books. Oh, oh thank you so much. And then we have John here in the chat who says that they love Pablo's Inferno and reminds me of references in the first Gum Girl book. Is one of the pictures a reference to the famous cover of Iron Man number 128? And the second question is, also is Natalie Gooch a reference to the bully 
in the different strokes TV show? Amazing questions. Okay, first, the Iron Man, I don't know exactly, but probably, I mean, I grew up reading tons of comics, um, but that was not an intentional reference, and I really want to look that up now, but that one, it might have been a subconscious thing, um, and, and real quick side note, I remember um, back in the day, reading comics was considered, that wasn't considered reading, it was like almost taboo to mention, hey, I like reading comics, you know, that wasn't considered reading, and um, not so long ago, I went into a Barnes and Nobles and their, their new, where usually their picture books are, it was all graphic novels. And that just, it just showed how much had changed over the years. And, you know, comic, reading comics is reading. And so um, I'm, I'm happy to see the shift that has happened. But so the Iron Man reference that probably is in there and whoever mentioned the different strokes, you got it 100% it is a <laughs> reference to the bully from different strokes and not so many people catch that. So that's awesome. But yeah, that's her last name is from the bully in different strokes. Oh, and then Joshua wants to know if this book can be found in libraries. I believe so. Yes, I think um, um, some libraries will have it and if not, you can request for your librarian to to pick it up and get the series. Great, so I think we can move into, I know we're running low on time, we can run into the um, behind the scenes. And we do have a question that I think ties into that. So maybe while you're presenting, yes. you can give advice to young people who really want to learn how to draw, maybe give them some tips as you're going through your presentation. Okay, yes, I can try. I, I try to, with this presentation, it is not pretty some of the things, but I try to show that, that, that this stuff does not look like how it, how you're seeing it out of the gates. And so I hope to share some of the ugliness, like it's a it's a beautiful ugliness. I think that that this is the kind of the lab um, where you go and try to figure this stuff out and it needs to be done to get to this um, final look. So I, I'm, I'm happy to share some of that and I hope I'll answer some of your drawing questions. So I'm gonna switch over now to the next presentation. Give me a minute here. And then as we transition into the second part, I want to acknowledge a comment that was made on the Q&A that said that, yes, boys chew gum as well, which is true. All kinds okay. of kids chew gum. Yes, all, all kids chew gum. And I tried to, you know, I know this book is Gum Girl, but I try to do it, you know, uh, you know, I'm a boy that did this story and I try to do it that it could be for everybody. So you don't have to be a girl to read this book. It's for everybody. Uh, anybody who loves superheroes, you, it's okay to read Gum Girl. <laughs> Okay, guys, thank you for these questions. I'll be right back. And you can continue dropping um, questions in the chat and we'll try and get to them uh, if we have a little extra time. Okay, um, can you guys hear me? Gabby? Yes. yes. Yep. Okay, thank you, Gabby. Okay, so here we go, you guys, secret origins to the amazing gum girl. And I thought I'd just share a little bit about myself along the way. Um, let's see here. Okay, so this is me in preschool, you guys. Um, I forget what age preschool is, but this is me. And um, just, just real quick behind the scenes stuff. So my parents are from Mexico and I actually, so English is my second language, believe it or not. And um, I hope that will help anybody who's maybe considering doing books that might think, hey, I might not be able to do that. You know, English is not my first language. I, believe it or not, learn English by watching Sesame Street. <laughs> so, so, you know, and so this is me in preschool and you can't really tell, but I can tell that I'm painting or drawing uh, Ultraman here, who was my favorite uh, superhero from Japan at the time that would show on television. So uh, my parents left me at preschool. I didn't want them to leave, but until they showed me the, the painting station, I said, it's okay for you guys to go. So I've always loved um, illust uh, drawing and it, it's been part of me since as long as I could remember. And here, if it helps, this looks nothing like Ultraman. I can tell but, um, to everybody else. Uh, hopefully you can see that, um, you know, we all start in the same place and you just, uh, practice and practice and practice and you'll get better and better. Uh, around this age, this book was read to me that changed everything for me. It's called Harold and the Purple Crayon. And what it is, it's about a little boy named Harold who has a magic purple crayon. 
and he pretty much draws his own adventures. So if Harold wants to climb some steps, he would draw some steps and walk up them. And this book was read to me at this, at this time and it just blew my mind. And I thought, oh, I, I'd love to do, you know, I just love what that feeling that I had with this and it always stayed with me. And in a way, you know, Harold draws his own adventures and it's kind of what I have become with my career, I guess, is I draw my own adventures for a living and it's, it's, the, best, it's the best feeling. But it's thanks to this book that inspired me and always stayed with me. Harold and the Purple Crayon, if you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. Very simple story, but it's beautiful. And also was a big inspiration for my first children's book, Cloud Boy, about a lonely little cloud boy in the clouds that sees a butterfly fly up into the sky and he gets inspired by it and he decides to sculpt a butterfly out of the clouds. Oh no, one second here. Oh, there it goes. So he gets inspired and he sculpts his own shape out of the clouds and he sends it off for others to see. And um, if you look closely, you will see how this is heavily inspired by Harold and the Purple Crayon. And it was my idea of wondering, like, what if there was someone up in the clouds that made the shapes that we see? That's, that's the origin of how this story started. So like I mentioned earlier, my editor at the time wondered, could there be another book that's maybe pink that could be a companion book to this picture book? And it didn't, it didn't eventually pan out, but the seed was planted and I thought of the idea of Gum Girl. And this here is the very first sketch of Gum Girl. And this was from a sketchbook and you can see how loose it is. And all I have here as a note stops burglars, if you can see that there. And she didn't have eyeballs, like she literally was covered in gum and she had this really icky gum coming down from her mouth and up here, uh, you can see that she's playing uh, jump rope with her arms. She stretched out her arms and she's playing jump rope. I know it's hard to see, but this is the very first drawing of Gum Girl. And like I mentioned earlier, I originally thought it would be a comic book. So here it is in comic book form. And this is what I was showing to publishers at the time, uh, hoping to get this published. So you can see how a lot of these images ended up making it into the book. Um, so that was a lot of fun to, to do this. Uh, in the beginning, um, and it eventually became the book that you see now. And um, for the um, for those of you who haven't picked up the book, each book has a, a gum scented cover, so you can scratch and sniff and smell the gum. Uh, but please don't try to scratch your screen; it only works with the book. <laughs> um, here, I while I was gathering things, I found. Um, a very loose chapter breakdown for Gum Girl number three. You could see up at the top. And like, again, this is not pretty to show, but it shows the thinking and I thought I'd share it. I normally don't share this kind of stuff, but here you can see at the top, it says Gum Girl number three, pop star. I had a title back then and I had that, this was the beginnings of the ideas of Gum Girl number three. And I actually found this on the back of a page of uh, art for Gum Girl number two. So if you look closely here, I don't know if you can see, um, for those of you who have book number three, number four, you can see um, something circle here that says Valeringa crime and it's circled and I shifted it over between uh, chapter one and two, um, just as a sign visual cue for myself to include that scene earlier. And for those of you who read the books, you can see her name later changed to Ballerina Ninja and I'll get more uh, into her, but this is kind of some of the behind the scenes thinking of the original, figuring out what's the story going to look like. Um, same thing while trying to gather uh, things, I found the outline. This is a, a Gum Girl number five outline um, that kind of breaks down what's going to be happening in the book. And so this is a, you know, a couple pages long that I then give to the editor and to uh, Luke Reynolds who helped me uh, write the books. Um, these are thumbnail sketches. Again, um, uh, not something I usually show, but I wanted to show how this stuff does not look pretty uh, to begin with. And um, uh, kids, you know, these are called thumbnail sketches because they're usually the size of your thumb and they're something that you quickly do 
to figure out the story. And here I have even some writing notes, but uh, figuring out the story and you do it small enough that some of the images will hold their own once they are blown up. You, you kind of get a sense of um, what stuff might look like and what are the bare necessities that are needed for some of the pages. Um, so these are, these are fun to do. And again, this is exploring the story and trying to figure out what works best for each page. Um, here, I wanted to share uh, some of the process. So this is a sketch. You can see here a lot of sketches. Uh, there's another one of her at the bottom here where um, she's rescuing some pets from a burning pet store. But the one I wanted to share right now is this sketch here. You can kind of see gum girl shaped as an umbrella and just some very loose scribbles here. And that eventually became this. Gum girl uh, transformed into umbrella, helping some kids and a nun um, um, stay dry. And this is the inked line work. I try to show it where you can see my inking on the nun's dress there. And you could also see some of my blue line pencil, um, which is a, a pencil that used to be used back in the day that wouldn't reproduce when they would make copies. So um, this has changed now with scanning, um, but I, I love using it. You can see some of the light blue pencil under there. So this is a final piece of artwork. Um, and then it eventually makes it into the book, gets colored. Um, I've been getting a lot of coloring help from my friend Joe Toe, who's amazing. Uh, shout out to Joe Toe and Luke Reynolds again, who helps me with the writing. Here, I wanted to share some of the, the sketches that are involved with the covers. So some more behind the scenes of what normally isn't seen. So I wish I could just knock out the cover and figure out, okay, this is the cover but sometimes it takes multiple sketches and feedback from the editor and the publisher. And so here I was trying to figure out what should be included with this, the cover of Gum Girl number two. Here's another attempt. It's kind of like a, a, um, a shot looking down with the shadow of Robo Chef in the background there. And here's another one where she's escaping from getting squashed by his foot, RoboChef's foot. These are all done in loose ballpoint pen uh, um, sketches, very loose. And again, these aren't supposed to be treated so preciously. It's just trying to figure out what uh, should go into the cover. And eventually I came across this um, solution which the editors liked, the editor liked and said to go to final. Here is the cover with the final inks. Again, you can see my blue line sketches underneath. I had some whirling going around the, the whisker there that I decided to take out. And let's see, this bank actually didn't make it to the final. I thought it'd be cleaner without it. Um, so here's the final cover. And um, the cover is, handled by graphic designers who um, put the title in there, the polka dot pattern, and I do, I do the coloring and they, they put all the, the words on there. Um, and I've had some good uh, graphic designers on my team. And so also it's not just me doing all of this. It takes a team to do these books and um, every bit is important to the book. So I thought I'd share those. Um, a quick behind the scenes uh, story from book number one. Um, if you look here, there's a blank poster. Originally, this poster was supposed to show more and this character would be on there. And this was an early um, concept for Ballerina Ninja. I thought this would be um, Gabby Gomez's um, favorite superhero at the time, but my editor loved it so much. And he was like, no, you got to put her in the book. You got to put it in the book. And I'm like, all right, no problem. You know, that sounds fun. And so before she was more adult um, sized and she later became kid sized and she comes out in the third book, um, Ballerina Ninja, um, again, was originally just meant to be a poster and she became a character in the series. Um, let's see here. Oh, and I think I'll end it here with what I'm working on currently is Gum Girl book number five. This maybe gives away a little bit, but I thought it'd be fun to share what is on the drawing 
table right now. And as you can see, Gabby is red. So some of you might be able to guess what flavor she is. Um, but that's what's been fun as well. Whatever gum uh, Gabby chews, she turns into gum girl. If she chews sour apple gum, she turns green. And each flavor gives her different superpowers. And so that's pretty fun. So this is for the fifth book uh, coming up. And the title is Stick Together. I think it comes out next year. And so that's it, you guys. Thank you so much. And I will stop this now and take some more questions if you have them. Yeah, so just a reminder, this is our last call for final questions. We just have a few minutes left on the call. So if you have any questions for Rhodey about the process, or you wanna learn more about what's coming up, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about what's in development right now. Um, yeah, if, if there aren't any questions or, or if maybe they'll trickle in. So um, I'm working on the, the fifth book right now and um, um, I'm on the inking phase. And so I'm, I'm inking as my friend is coloring. So we're, we're doing it at the same time. And I wish I had some pages laying around. Let's see here. Yeah, I don't have any laying around, but um, yeah, I'm doing the fifth fifth book, which has been a lot of fun. And um, here, I'll show the other books here. These are, let's see if they'll show up here. Uh, here are three of the books. Oops. Three of the books and the fourth one, the most recent one. This one's pretty fun. Gab uh, Gabby um, goes to Mexico and she learns more about her um, her roots and learns that the origins of gum actually started with the Aztecs and Mayans. So it kind nice. of opens up this whole other um, purpose and world for her um, in the fourth book. And that was one book that I was excited to get to um, share that story. So that was a lot of fun. Do you have any recommendations on where people can find your books if they haven't gotten all of the Amazing Gum Girl series or they want to pick up anything else? Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, so any online bookstores, and um, I highly recommend going to IndieBound.org for independent bookstores near you that you could help support during this time, which a lot of stores are struggling during this time. And so it'll, it'll point you to the nearest independent bookstore um, that's selling, that are selling my books. And if not, you can go to some of the other major online <laughs> book retailers, which you probably know about anyway. And then how can they follow along with you on social or do you have a website? Yes, so um, for Gum Girl specifically, I have a Facebook page that's that's all Gum Girl. And then I'm very active on my Instagram, which is at Rhodey Montijo, R-H-O-D-E, spelled like Rhode Island, but it's Rhodey Montijo. And that's on Instagram. And that's where I post the most frequently um, for more up-to-date stuff. But for the Gum Girl stuff, I recommend to go to the Gum Girl Facebook page. So I have a couple of questions from the audience. Fantastic. Um, so Hazel and Asul would like to know if there will be a book six. And then um, somebody else asked in developing the books, um, does the publisher determine if you make more books or is that your choice? Great questions. Okay, so um, I'll be honest with you guys. Originally, this was signed up as a trilogy, which I was happy about. And Originally, um, I had just a couple of words uh, of Spanish sprinkled in, and then between books uh, one and two, they asked me to put more Spanish, and I was like, whoa, the times are changing. This nice. is amazing. And so very thankful for that. And I, of course, I added, I added more. And I always try to add it where it's not alienating. So even if you don't read, if you don't know Spanish, you get the gist. So if Gabby's mom says, buenos dias, Gabby, her response will be like, good morning, mom, you know, something like that. So you can get the gist of what's being said and, and you don't feel left out. Um, so that that was exciting. So originally it was signed up to be a trilogy, which I was excited about. And um, if you look closely by the third book, the story kind of wraps up. I had to tie up all the loose ends and I asked the publisher, are you sure, you know, there won't be any more books? And they say, yeah, that's it, Rhodey, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna have to wrap it up. And I was like, but I have so many more stories to tell, you know, like, it's like comic books, the, the storylines are endless, I feel. So 
the publisher had signed up three books and then they said to wrap it up. And I, I asked them, are you sure? Because I'll tie up all the loose ends, but I can keep it going. You know, just like uh, Aunt May in, in Spider-Man, you know, she doesn't know Peter Parker's secret identity uh, for many comic issues. So, so they said, yes, uh, you know, we're gonna have to wrap it up. So I wrapped it up. And then like maybe two weeks later, um, um, I was asked to do two more books. So that was awesome, you know, and so, that's why I was excited to tell that fourth story because it was one that I was hoping that I would be able to get to and I did. So as of right now, only five books are um, uh, signed up, um, but I finished the fifth book and I didn't wrap it up, you know? So I, like I said, I can keep going, but for now only five books are scheduled. So a YouTuber wants to know if there is plans for a gold cover, and if there were plans for a gold cover, what kind of gum or what flavor would Gabby Gomez chew? I'm sorry, a gold cover? Yeah. Gold? Oh, wow. I, I mean, uh, anything is possible, you know, and um, that, that, that makes me think of the kind of uh, uh, the comic uh, cover craze in the 90s. Um, they had um, foil covers, but anything's possible. Yeah, I, but I don't know what flavor it would be. Uh, maybe banana? I don't know. And then one more question from uh, Monica. She's wondering, who are artists and authors that you're excited about right now? Oh, great question. Um, I think, um, um, let's see, well, com comics, Comics are always on the list for me, but um, the last book that I read that I really loved, and I'm gonna blank out on her last name, but um, it's called Alma and How She Got Her Name, something like this. It's a picture book about a little girl who wonders how did she get her name? And it's a beautifully illustrated book um, um, by this uh, Peruvian uh, writer and illustrator, Juana Martinez, I think. I love that book if you get a chance. Um, that was one of my favorites from recent, recently, and it's oh, it's it just speaks to me. It's just a beautiful, beautiful story, and and I think something that hadn't been tackled before, um, like the origins of someone's name. So um, I highly recommend that one, and that's the only one that's kind of popping in my head right now. Ah, there's probably more, but that's what's popping in my head right now. Uh, and somebody suggested for the gold cover piña flavor hey, so we'll get the pineapple in there yes that's a good one i'll keep it in mind thank you okay so if we don't have any other questions we'll wrap it up Rodi, thank you so much for doing this it was amazing to learn about your process and to see all of that exclusive content that you shared with us today uh, thank you so much thank you for having me um, again everybody and uh, thank you for everybody who attended yeah, and if you're interested in more um, Latino Comics Expo content, tomorrow at 4 p.m. we will have Latinx Kids Lit Creation and Intervention, moderated by the one and only Professor Latinx himself, Frederick Alabama from Ohio State University. And then at 7 p.m., co-founder Javier Hernandez will be in the studio with artist Jorge Garza of Azteca Pop. And we will have programming through next Saturday afternoon. So we'll hope you'll join us again very soon and have a lovely Sunday. Bye.